Restore your health, be renewed. You gotta take control to see a breakthrough. You're only one step away from a life made better. A life made better. A life made better. Greetings to all of our dedicated listeners of the Restore Your Health podcast. This week, we'll discuss herbal supplements for health and immunity, black health history and wellness, developing a healthy lifestyle and strategies for wellness. We'll also discuss updates to COVID-19, Omicron, and Delta variant, and how to maintain a stress-free environment. So who doesn't need that, right? (laughs) Let me first share that all information on the show are merely for informational purposes only, not meant to diagnose, cure, heal, or prevent any disease. I like to start with a little inspiration. This week, inspiration comes from the poem, Start Where You Stand, and it reads, The past won't help you in beginning new. The past won't help you in beginning new. If you have left it all behind at last, why? That's enough. You're done with it. You're through. Though it's another chapter in the book, this is another race that you have planned. The past won't help you in beginning new. If you have left it all behind at last, why? That's enough. You're done with it. You're through. This is another chapter in the book. This is another race that you have planned. Don't give up. Don't give the vanished days a backward look. Start where you stand. The world won't care about your past defeats. If you could start anew and win success, the future is your time and time is fleet. And there is much work and strain and stress. Forget the buried woes and dead despairs. Here is a brand new trial right at hand. The future is for him who does and dares. Start where you stand. Wow, (laughs) what an amazing poem that was. And it's true. You know, you start where you stand. You look at all the things that you've accomplished in the past and you look at the things that you've left behind, whether it be good or bad, you can start where you are. You can get up again. Okay, if you fall down, if you miss it, if you get off track, guess what? It's not the end of the world. You can get up and start over. You can start afresh. You can start a new, you can start a new business, you know, a new hobby, a new gift, whatever it is you desire, you can start anew. So this poem is encouraging us that we can start wherever you are. So wherever you are in your life today, whether it be good or bad, whether you're in a successful place or not so successful place, you can still start where you are and build where you are. It's never too late. Listen, age is nothing but a number. It all determines your mindset, okay? Your mind determines where you're going to be. So your mind is like the boss of you. Your mind tells you what to do. Your brain, (laughs) in other words, tells your body what to do. And likewise, your mind dictates where you are and where you're going in life and if you'll succeed or not. So if you believe that you'll succeed, guess what? You probably will succeed. If you believe that you won't, you probably won't succeed. So this is a a very true saying. This poem stands true to anybody who reads it and can relate to the poem, you know, who've had some things that they've left behind in their past and they're starting afresh, starting new, they're beginning again, you know, they're making a clean slate, so to say. And we're just telling you today that you can start where you are and you can win and be successful in life in every aspect of life you can win in every area that means when i say you can win i mean you can win i mean you can be successful in every area of your life if you believe that if you believe that you can do it you can like no one woke up and became immediately successful it took hard work it took determination it took resilience okay it took dedication so all of these things play a a, a vital role in how you succeed in life. All these play a vital role in where you get in life. Okay, in, in in your destination, so to say, in your success and what you accomplish in life. But it all starts with the mind. You know, the word of God says, whatever a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think that you can do it, guess what? You can do it. I believe you can do it. <laughs> so guess what? Let's go ahead and start, right? Let's begin again. Let's start where we stand and begin to build. It is just as simple as that.
okay? No one's holding you back but you. So let's go ahead and start the building process. And wherever you are in life today, you can start building. And I promise you by next week, you'll be at a better place and you'll be able to look back and say, guess what? I did that. I had the confidence to know that I could accomplish it and I actually did it, right? (laughs) So that's what we want you guys to be encouraged. I hope that this poem encouraged you to start where you stand, you know, begin where you are and just keep going. Don't ever stop. Don't ever not believe that you can do something great in life. You are your biggest critic after all. It's you. So start where you are and let's get the ball rolling. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And let's do it together. We can make a better world. You and me. That's right. We can do it together. All right. So let us go ahead and start. We're going to be talking about Black history. Um, We're going to be talking about Black history wellness, um, the history of farming and all kinds of good things. And we're also going to do some live tours and talk to some of our seasoned people who are some seasoned farmers and people who who have great history, their um, aspect on things and how the Black American heritage diet has come, how far we've come as a people and the timeline and where we are today and where we stand today. So let's go ahead and begin with exploring the history of Black health and wellness, healthy foods, and the future of wellness. It's been a cultural tradition of African-American diets to adapt to the American soul food diet with some extras. You know, (laughs) foods like fried chicken, collard greens, cabbage, cooked and pork meat, cornbread, candy yams, and lots of desserts on the side. (laughs) Some of the foods that we all grew up on. Although this sounds good, if eaten in abundance can lead to health issues issues down the line. So stay mindful of that. I know we love all these foods, but these same foods can can be cooked in a healthier way, right? So let's explore different ways to cook some of the foods that we love, some of the soul food dishes that we've been eating for decades that we've cooked and that our parents and our our grandparents, I know that, you know, my grandparents and uh, great grandparents, they all cook with pork meat. And so growing up, you know, we ate with what our parents cooked, right? You didn't have a choice. You're going to eat what we cooked, but it was good. (laughs) Let me tell you, um, I'm not bashing. It was really good. Um, But as you get older and you learn more about health and wellness, you learn how to cook things differently. So all I'm saying is just learn how to cook your favorite dishes better, okay? Learn how to cook them healthier, okay? So all those, this, all of this stuff, it sounds good if eaten in abundance. Like I said, it can lead to health issues down the line. This diet comes from early century days of poor slave diets who had no choice but to eat the leftovers or scraps of their masters. That's right. They ate, slaves ate the scrap, the leftovers from their master's table. And so um, that was uh, a big source of their um, their diet, their food. However, the soul food diet was birthed in the early 1900 era where black housewives became business owners as they discovered different ways to cook the leftover meals and sell them for profit. Now that was smart, huh? <laughs> for slavery, blacks were originally farmers. That's right. They were farmers who grew their own foods from the earth. So not only did they have the scraps from their master's tables, but they had their own farms too. Okay. So during this time, there were very little illnesses due to the healthy habits from the foods grown. So because they had, they didn't have all the pesticides and all the um, things that we have that are put in food uh, nowadays, they had, you know, organic gardens. They grew their food from the earth. They, they were afforded the chance to grow their own food, which later was revealed as the the African um, heritage diet, okay? So this diet that Blacks were accustomed to was later on was later on revealed as the American heritage diet. Today, this diet has taken upon a greater level of precedence in the Black communities as a whole with the national pandemic as it has become the center of concern and priority. So people are looking at ways they can make their meals healthier. They're looking at alternative medicine. They're looking at, you know, different ways, holistic ways to uh, remain healthy, um, different ways that they can incorporate in their, their diet healthier way of living, so to say. So that's what people are looking for. And because people are doing that, you know, it's, it's the, I think because the, the pandemic took us all by surprise and people started getting sick in their bodies. So the pandemic, um, COVID-19 became pretty much the topic of discussion and the, the primary concern of a lot of people, not just Black people, but all people, all Americans, all over the world, different cultures. But because we are focusing on Black History Month, 
month, for this month, we're talking about our Black communities and how we have, you know, kind of stepped up to the plate and took precedence over what's going on, took responsibility. And, you know, we as a Black people have pretty much took responsibility of what we put in our mouths, what we put on our tables for our children and the foods that we buy. And also we've become uh, more holistic. Some of us have started doing their own backyard gardens. Um, some have become farmers, um, have changed their occupations and to dig a little bit deeper into this whole holistic medicine thing. Some have become herbalists, some have become healers, some have become medical physicians with a concentration on this area. So a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed through the years as a Black community. And we're going to talk a little bit about farming. So let's uh, take a a little switch here. And we're going to talk about the history of Black farmers. Not only are we going to talk about the history of Black farmers, but we're going to show you a film as well, in addition to our discussion today. Okay. So the history of farming was mostly concentrated in the South. Farmers, both Black and white, were affected by the economy. They ran cashless businesses, farming, and would exchange land as a way of compensation. So they didn't have compensation and they would use their land as a way of exchanging money. White farmers would give land for work done and black farmers who needed work would find themselves working for the white land owners. It was an even exchange and both needed help. Soon after became an agriculture ladder consisting of independent farmers, landowners, sharecroppers, and tenant farmers. Tenant farmers are those who pay landowners to access their land and receive credit for the harvest. Okay, so which they believe that if a person worked hard enough could one day own that land and earn financial stability and independence. Yes. And this is how a lot of our ancestors lived. They, you know, they worked on the land of the white farmer's land and in return, after working for so long in exchange, owned the land and was able to leave a heritage for their children, which is awesome, right? And so this was known as the American dream as we know it today, especially for African-Americans because it afforded them the ability to guide a legacy and leave an inheritance for their children as farming grew to be a cash intensive business. Yes. So farming was a big deal, you know, back in those days, that was the way that they made their income. Black farmers and business owners pulled together during this time to ban a union and survive tough economic times. So it was hard for the black farmer. It wasn't an even exchange, right? For the black farmers as it was white farmers. Black farmers had a harder time getting seed and and supplies for to carry out and continue their business. So what did they do? (laughs) You guessed it. They pulled together. They pulled their resources together and they were able to survive during tough economic times. Yes, so that was a great thing. These cooperative unions involved church communities with common interests centered around farming and crop sharing to help buy seeds and supplies in bulk, which in return, which helped black farmers who relied on local merchants for supplies that kept them in debt. So the union kept black businesses thriving and in return became the primary means of providing for their families Due to their way of life, they stay very active and guess what? Healthy, right? (laughs) They stay very healthy, limiting the need for medical care. In most cases, they quickly adapted to healthy food regimens from the crops grown. Wow. So, you know, the farmers grew their food. They pulled together. They were able to survive during hard economic times, which is very smart. It was a great thing to do. Um, Back then, they had to help Chuck, right? It's like if one, one succeeds, we all succeed. So if one fail, we all fail. And that's the mindset they had back then. They didn't have that mindset of, you know, pulling each other down, but they had the mindset of pulling their resources together. And let's see what we can do together to help each other. And they were able to survive um, in in that in that era, which was a great thing. And then, so let's take a, a closer look at health and wellness and how it's evolved throughout the years. Okay. So we're going to look at the timeline of the African-American diets. The timeline of the African-American diets has taken a turn for the better, as many people are focusing on health and wellness in cultural communities more than ever. Healthier food choices, herbal alternatives and herbal alternative medicine, uh, doctors and physical fitness combating hereditary diseases and illnesses. So this is, I mean, this is awesome. Health has been on all of our minds, developing a lifestyle of wellness. So one might ask, how do you develop a lifestyle of health and well? 
is. We're going to tell you right here. All right. So having a strategy is going to be important. Okay. It's going to help you to easily adapt to a, to a successful regimen. And it's key in the success of your health. So let's look at how we've changed throughout the years. The history of the African-American life and health study reveals invaluable contributions to health and wellness this year and in the past years to include a focus on different medical approaches to health care in the Black Spora. African-Americans have made an impact on the health and wellness that played a vital role in the improvement of medicine, health, and wellness of all people. To recognize quality doctors who gave back to society, such as Dr. Rebecca Crumpler, the first Black woman physician in the United States to receive an MD degree in 1864. She was the only Black graduate of New England Female Medical College in 1873, and author of a book of medical discourses which addressed women and children's health. Also, Dr. Charles Drew pioneered the blood preservation techniques and led the first American Red Cross blood bank and mobile donation stations. Health and wellness pioneers like these are the reason we have better communities to date and have knowledge on how to live healthier lives. Through the Blood for Britain project, Dr. Drew directed plasma shipments to England during World War II. Dr. Herbert Nickens also led Project 3000 by 2000 programs for the AAMC, which began in 1991 to enroll 3,000 students from underrepresented minority groups into medical schools in the U.S. every year by year 2000. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, what an accomplishment. What a way to give back to your society, to your people, to your culture. It's just amazing. It's been rumored that the very thing he founded was not afforded him to save his own life. Several sources dispute this claim. Okay, so Dr. Jocelyn Elders also led the Arkansas Department of Health in 1984 and served as the first African-American surgeon in 1993. Dr. Elders quoted, health is more than absence of disease. It is about economics, education, environment, empowerment, and community. I couldn't agree with her more. What a powerful statement that is. You know, health is more than just the absence of disease. It is about economics and education. <laughs> the more that you know, okay, the more that you know about health and wellness, the better you can be up. And it's also, uh, you know, it pertains to your environment, the environment you're in, how healthy is the environment you're in, the empowerment, you know, the people who are in authority, the community of people that are surrounding you, you know, coming together as a community, as a whole, as, as one, having the same mind, so to say. All of these really, really, really matter and are very, very important in the progress of health and wellness in the Black community. We need to, we need to continue to grow in this area, continue to learn more. There, there are more ways of health and obtaining healing and health and all this than it is the traditional um, medicine. There are more ways. And so we should, as a people, explore all of the ways, not just the traditional ways, but alternative ways, you know, holistic ways, you know, things like acupuncture, massage, essential oils, herbal supplements, herbs, plants, you know, all of these things play a vital role into healing. And it's what our ancestors used before we had the traditional medicine. They used that to heal their bodies and to become well. And guess what? They lived longer lives. You know, they didn't have all the health issues. They ate fresh fruits and veggies. They drank nothing but water because that's all they had. Like they didn't have a soda pop and all the stuff that we have today. So they had no choice but to drink water, right? Yeah. So they were healthier in return because of the foods that they put in their body. And it really boils down to that. What you do, your stress level, the foods that you put in your body, the exercise, all of these are aspects to good health and wellness, and they play a vital role in the way that you live your life, and they play a vital role in the way that your health evolves over time, okay? So in addition, concentrating on alternative and holistic treatments, that's becoming more and more common as people are seeking ways to improve their overall mind, body, and spirit health. Holistic wellness pioneers strive to educate on the importance of self-care and wellness through meditation 
meditation, diet, exercise, spiritual and emotional healing. With other approaches, healthcare continues to exist with racial disparities with an effort to increase enrollment of underrepresented minorities in medical schools. According to the AAMC, only 5% of active physicians in 2018 were African American. Wow, that is, I mean, that's a shocking percentage to know that only 5% of the African American culture are in the medical field, you know, their profession. So we need to really increase that number. We need to encourage more people, you know, to get a desire to, to be in, in the medical field. We need more black doctors, right? We need more quality black doctors who are really concerned about their patients and who will go out of their way to make sure that their patients are healed and healthy and, you know, who won't do things just for the money. It's, you know, some things aren't all about money. It's about the person. It's about the health of the individual. It's about being responsible for someone else's life, right? So it's not all about the money that you're going to make off of that that patient or the deal, the money deal. It's not all about that. Um, it's all about you take care of people, then guess what? And in return, you too will be taken care of and your business will thrive. So that's just a little nugget, you know, just to leave that in your mind, all right? So, all right, so let's go ahead and move on. So today, Black health and wellness have become an opportunity for Blacks to work together for the betterment of all. Yes. So we have opportunities to work together. Let's do it together. Okay. Um, let's get healthy together and let's educate each other because one person may have more education than the other one in the area of health and wellness. And by all means, if you have that education, share it. Don't demean each other and, um, just, you know, that that's not becoming and that's not going to help anyone. But if you have information that will help someone else to stay well, by all means, share it. We all need to know that. All right. So let's move on and discuss strategies for maintaining health and wellness. Who who doesn't want that? Improving your overall health takes planning a workable strategy that can be easily done. Let's talk about how it's done. All right. So first, you're going to find out. Um, what what exercises you can do. You're going to get some videos and be consistent with it to improve your overall physical health, strength, and endurance. Starting an exercise routine custom to fit your schedule. Don't try to do something that someone else does. Do what you can do, something that's custom to fit your schedule and exercises you like to do, okay? Number two, eat foods that give your body the nutrients and minerals needed 90% of the time. <laughs> and why did I say 90% of the time? Because I know that we all like to eat snacks. Come on. We all eat it healthy or not. We eat our snacks. All right. But if you eat healthy foods, 90% of the time, you get your smoothies in with your greens and your veggies and your fruit, get that in early in the morning, get your vitamins in, then you'll be well on your way, okay? So if you do get snacky during the day, that little 10% won't really hurt much, right? And then when you do, just choose healthy snacks, like protein bars, things of that nature um, that are healthy, okay? Nuts and fruits and, you know, different health. They have. They even have, guess what? They even have um, a vegan ice cream, which is delicious, by the way. I don't know if you've tried it, but oh, my goodness, I've tried it and it's absolutely delicious. You really can't tell the difference. They they have it where you really, you really just, you can't tell the difference. So there are lots of different ways um, that you can incorporate healthy foods that will give your body the nutrients, the minerals, the protein that it's needed so that you can have stamina and endurance. Number three, keep a stress-free work environment. I cannot stress this enough. Stress plays a huge part on the way your body reacts. Your body reacts to stress negatively, okay? So you want to make sure that you're doing things throughout the day to keep you stress-free, like listening to some soft meditation music while you're working, taking several breaks, maybe going outside, getting a little bit of fresh air, and staying away from gossipy people, right? Like you don't want to hear all that gossip. When you listen to someone else's gossip, it makes you get all upset and bothered. So let's stay away from that as well, okay? Number four, incorporate a holistic lifestyle with the use of natural herbs and plants. Yes, we know that all medicine derived from plants. 
That's right. They came from plants, natural herbs out of the earth. So when you incorporate those holistic um, herbal supplements into your regimen, it just enhances your health even the more. Okay. Drink plenty of water to stay hydrated. The body is made up of 95% of water. We already know this. So you need to make sure that you're staying hydrated um, throughout the day. So drink water. And you know, there are other things that have water in them. You can drink your, like I said, your smoothie, your juices, that your health juices that have water in it. But mainly we want to stick to water itself. So you can get a jug, have it by your desk and make sure that you're drinking water or you can just take a few empty um or you can just take a few bottles of water and put them by your desk. That way you can count how much water you're drinking throughout the day, right? And know that you're staying hydrated. But the main thing is to stay hydrated, okay? Drinking water is essential. You need water. The body needs water, okay? Number six, meditate and pray, okay, to free your mind and stay focused on what matters the most. When you meditate and pray, you release stress hormones in the body. That's right. You're not thinking about all the negative things okay so we want to make sure that you're meditating and that you're praying and that you're staying stress-free throughout the day that you're leaving your cares behind so that you can operate and function you know in optimum care and optimum health all right number seven get regular yearly checkups with a trusted physician to maintain good health and wellness i'm gonna tell you nothing more like having a physician that you can trust in because you're putting your life into the hands of a physician and that's really big okay that's very important so you want to make sure that you have a doctor that you can trust someone that won't take you, what you're saying for granted Okay, like it's a joke or something, but who really listens to the heart of their patient and goes beyond what they need to do to make sure that their patient stays healthy and then to make sure that their patient keeps coming back. Right. And so that's another thing. If you're healthy and you're going to a trusted physician, then you're going to tell your friends and your other friends and they're going to tell their friends. And so, hey, it works for both sides. Right. So just make sure that you have a trusted doctor, someone that you can you can entrust in your health and wellness. And they're going to go beyond to make sure that you stay healthy, to make sure that you're here for a long time, that you're living life to the fullest. So we want to make sure that we do that. That's really important. And if you don't have one, find one. I know that, you know, you can get your, you can either get yearly checkups or you can get checkups every two years. So it all depends on your personal preference. But I know that, um, I think, I know with my kids, I do them every year. And um, so make sure that they stay healthy as well. Um, get their checkups every year. They go in and get their annuals. Um, and then I do mines, you know, I used to do mines every year, but now I've switched to every two years. So, um, but yeah, just make sure that you do that. All right. So let's talk about ways to improve your work environment. We talked about that a little bit, staying, you know, stress-free. And we talked about playing soft meditation music while working. Um, another thing you can do is don't overload yourself with too many tasks. Yeah, I know it. I, I've done it. I have the t-shirt. <laughs> okay, so don't overload yourself with too many tasks. Do one thing at a time, complete that, and then move to the next. Number three, create a schedule and stick to it. Create your own schedule, something that you can do, and stick with your schedule. That way you'll be is less stressed because you're operating by your own schedule. Ask for help when you need it. If you're feeling overwhelmed, okay, and you have your workload is too heavy, ask for help help okay we all need help sometimes if it's too much for you just ask for help that'll relieve some distress number five you're going to take breaks throughout the day we talked about that take take breaks get up from the computer walk around you know go get a snack go outside take a mini walk get some fresh air um you know hey just get away from the desk okay do something different number six get enough rest at night for the strength that you'll need for the next day now rest plays a huge part in how we can improve our work environment why because if you're not rested up at night you don't have enough sleep you're gonna be grumpy grouchy you know irritable the next day because you didn't get enough sleep you couldn't go to sleep so you got to go to sleep. You got to get that rest. That rest is important. It is vital to your overall health and wellness. All right, guys. So as I said before, because this is a Black History Month and we're talking about um, Black health and wellness, we're going to also, in addition to our podcast today, we're going to um, incorporate some videos 
we're going to talk to some people who are seasoned and who know of our history. I'm going to get a chance to actually talk to my grandma who was raised on our family farm. Yeah, we had a family farm and we had lots of acreage. Um, there was a lake on our family farm. And so they grew crops and all that. I think that's where I, I kind of learned it from. I know, as a matter of fact, I know that's where I learned it from. <laughs> My grandmother taught me everything she knew. And I'm going to get a chance to sit down and, and pick her brain to find out all this good information. All right. And then we'll share that with you along with other videos that are coming with other pioneers in African-American history who knows more about this than we know and they're willing to share. So if you know of someone else who are willing to share information, please, please um, drop the in information in our email and we will see it and we'll get to that, right? Because we'd like to hear from you guys. If you, if you have a topic that you want to discuss, if you have something that could add value to what we're already discussing, if you would please send that to our email address. And that email address is restoringhealthnationwide at gmail.com. Okay, so now let's talk about updates to COVID-19 Omicron Delta variant. So this week, updates to COVID-19 Omicron and Delta variants are the Omicron variant has become the top focus and has taken precedence over the COVID-19, with new cases now down to about 80% from the early January peak. New masking and vaccination policies from Washington, D.C. to New York City and Canada. Omicron variant was still raging according to the CDC's data and Delta variant hasn't seen in weeks. The Fairfax County Public Schools have started the countdown to allowing students, get this, to go mass less as the county has pressed the threshold for moderate community transmission. Now, I'm going to stop right there and elaborate. The ma the whole maskless thing in schools, it j that just really scares me because we're not out of the woods with this thing yet. Yes, the numbers are decreasing. Yes, so people are um, the numbers are going down and we're not seeing the peaks are going down. The cases are going down. Oh, this is great. But guess what? I think that we still should be wearing a mask, especially if you're indoors and your, you know, your kids are right next to another child's desk. You guys, come on now. I mean, we're not out of it completely yet. So let's take precautions. Now, outside is another thing. You're outside in the open. So yeah, you can go maskless outside outside recess time, playtime or whatever, outside, outdoors, playground. Um, but indoors is another thing because, you know, indoors ventilation is, is not as well as it is outside. Plus, you know, COVID-19 is an airborne um, virus. Okay, so this virus is airborne. So we want to make sure that we continue to wear our masks. That's my personal opinion. But like I said, they are allowing their students to go maskless. This is in the Fairfax County public school system. So I know that some cities and some states are also following the lead in this uh, whole maskless thing. So I guess you guys just have to, as parents, <laughs> you really have to take precautions and use your own discretion, you know? The Bible tells us to use wisdom, that wisdom is the principal thing. All you're getting, get understanding, right? So you want to make sure that you're using wisdom in everything. You want to make sure that wisdom is guiding our, our way and not our own mind, okay? Because sometimes we can do things too quickly and it can lead to even further cases on down the line. All right, so that's all I have to say about that. But that was just my personal opinion adding to it. <laughs> okay, so the Omicron wave is almost done with a smaller number of cases. Recently, the New York Times chart showed the daily average of cases nationwide peaked to 806,000 on January the 14th. Yesterday, the reports were of 206,000 new cases and the seven-day average of daily cases has dropped below 155,000, an 80% drop in a month. Uh Amazing. So we are making progress, but we're not there yet. All right. This which puts the country back to the new case levels before the Christmas holidays. So we are improving and we'll soon see a decrease in numbers and a resolution in overall case. However, despite some states lifting their mask mandates, guys, to personal preferences, mask wearing should continue. 
in efforts to help lower the spread and see less cases. We want to see less and less cases of COVID-19, Omicron, and the Delta variant. So we got to stay vigilant, right? We got to keep our eyes open. We got to stay on this, especially for in-person school setting, you know, as far as the elementary, middle, and high schools. Remaining vigilant is vital to the resolution of the pandemic and keeping numbers down. So let's do that. Let's work together, okay? Let's be team players. Let's do it together. I know we can, all right? So also, so guys, I want to tell you, stay tuned, stay tuned for our next Restore Your Health podcast tour because we're going in deep, okay? We're going to talk to farmers on the history and timeline of farming, food, and African-American culture. We're going to talk to those seasoned in the area of health and wellness. We're going to talk to holistic healers, doctors, all that we have coming down the line. And I'm so excited to share that with you guys, that we have all this great information to share with you. And history. We have a rich history, okay? A lot of things that have taken, a lot of things that have gone on that we really don't know, we don't know about. You know, there are just um, the other day, I was uh, reminded of a, a girl who found a old abandoned schoolhouse that belonged to her ancestors and they were able to preserve it and they're working on now uh actually they're going to work on now to start the process in preserving it but she found a piece of history in her family so do you have any history in your family that you don't know about hmm that's the question i bet you do i bet you do and you just don't know it you know just like i didn't know that our family well i knew that we had a farm a family farm, but I didn't know how how far that history goes back into actually talking to my grandmother about the history. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys. All right. But just just listen out for that. It's coming. All right. Well, that concludes this week's podcast. If you like this video, click the subscribe button and share with a friend. To share my new book, Live, Sleep, and Eat Well, visit our website at LaRondaDawsonMinistries.com or you can purchase it on Amazon Kindle Bookstore. Until next week, have an amazing weekend, everyone. Restore your health, be renewed. You gotta take control to see a breakthrough. You're only one step away from a life. Life made better